could be setting us up for not what we want, but instead what we need. Hi, come on, Lord. So, the name of today's talk is going to be God's way of helping us. And my first point is going to be God will give you what you need, but not necessarily what you want. So, let's turn to the book of Acts. Chapter 3. And we're going to do verses 1 through 8. And when you have it, say amen. 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 All right. So let us read together. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Amen. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Yeah. Amen. So, what we can take from this, the lame man wanted alms. Mm-hmm. And he saw Peter and John, and he asked of them. And Peter looked at him and he said, Well, silver and gold I have none of. But let me give you instead what you need. So he gave him the ability to walk. Yeah. Sometimes we may ask God for something that we want. Yes. Might not get it. Yes. But instead, he might give us something that we need more of. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, setting us up for something greater. Yes. And it's not always going to be like external stuff. It's not going to be like more money yes. or a better house. It can very well be just simply an attitude adjustment. Amen. Right? Amen. Even, if you will, a spiritual adjustment. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Amen. And at times he's going to give it to us even when we don't expect it. Yes. Right? So, <clears throat> come on, the Mr. Bond. Is, if we look in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, the B part, it says, Do not be like them, for your father knows before you ask him. So don't worry about if you're praying for something mm-hmm. and God doesn't fulfill it right off the bat. Amen. He knows what you need. Amen. It's like when the Israel the Israelites were fleeing out of Egypt. <laughs> and every point that they came across, they always wanted to go back to Egypt. Matt. And God at that point gave them exactly what they needed to keep going forward. Amen. So Ooh. if it looks like you're not going to get what you want. Don't worry about it. Amen. God's going to supply what you need. Amen. Yeah. Now, so he's going to give you what you want instead of what you need. But how do you get it? To receive it, you got to have faith in Christ. Amen. So let's go and read Acts chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 9 through 12. Amen. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which set it alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Uh-huh. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Uh-huh. And as the lame man which was healed, healed Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? But why look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man walk? And we're going to jump down to verse 16. And his name, through faith, in his name have made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Ye, the faith which is by him, have given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Amen. (laughs) So, the people see this man. They know that this man was the lame man at the gate. Yeah. Asking for an alms. And now they see him walking around with Peter and John. Yeah. 
Amen. So they look at Peter and John, and Peter just, whoa, hold up, hold up, stop right there. Uh -huh. This isn't my power. My Amen. Power. This, I have nothing to do with this. Yeah. What has happened to this man was because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice that when Peter told the man to stand up, <clears throat> the man did it immediately. Yes. And he didn't give Peter no excuse why he couldn't do it. He didn't throw any sort of, you know, I've been lame my whole life, so how do you expect me to stand up? Right? Amen. So, likewise, when God tells us to do something, <clears throat> we shouldn't hesitate. You know, we might be on our comfort zone, and God might tell us to move over into this place. And, you know, we're kind of like, well... Now, it's kind of comfortable right here where I'm at. Amen. Now, you, get com you get comfortable and God tells you to move, move. Amen. Likewise, if you're in a hurry to move and God, and you're waiting on God to tell you something, and you hear him, and you just, boom, run right into the wall, hit your head, and then God's going to tell you, well, no, I didn't tell you to move. I was going to show you something. Amen. That's the thing to watch out for. Amen. He might have you in a place that you don't want to be in mm -hmm. because he needs to show you something. Yeah. Amen. It could be anything. You know, a person might need some help or, you know, it could be a situation you don't want to be in, a person you don't want to be around, but he has you there for a reason. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. So we need to have faith like this lame man did and listen to the spirit. And when it tells us to move, okay. We move. Amen. It's similar to when Moses parted the waters. <clears throat> Had the people of Israel just kept on going before he parted the waters, they would have drowned, right? Mm -hmm. And had they waited until the water was up and Moses and the other Israelites were in the middle, they either would have gotten captured mm -hmm. or they would have drowned. Uh -huh. Amen. So... <clears throat> If we look in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, yeah, yeah, yeah. and lean not unto thine understanding. Yeah. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we shouldn't rely on our own understanding to get us through a situation. Amen. If it feels like, once again, that God's not going to give us what we want, what we want, but he's going to give us what we need. We've got to have faith in that. Yeah. And know that he's always going to give us what we need, even if it doesn't seem like it. My Lord. So, we know now, God's going to give us what we want instead of what we need. And to receive it, we got to have faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. But, you might be saying to yourself, well, I've done some bad things. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. It's never too late. Come on, That's so right. we're going to hop back into Acts chapter 3. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this time we're going to read verses 13 through 19. And wow. So when you haven't said amen. All right. The God of Abraham and of Isaac yes. and of Jacob. The God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, mm -hmm. and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I walk through ignorance ye did it, as did your rulers. But those things which God before hath shewed by the mouth of his prophets, mm -hmm. that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. And this is the important part. Repent ye yeah. therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So you might think you've done something bad, right? But these people, these people were the ones who were responsible for the death of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And even though they did it in ignorance, Peter tells them that by repenting, mm -hmm. they can have their sins blotted out. Yeah. Now that word repent, 
it is an important word in the scripture. Because it does not just simply mean that you apologize to God and then you just continue doing whatever it is you're doing. Amen. 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 It means that you turn away from sin nature mm -hmm. and embrace God. Amen. You might you might get caught up in it again, but if you do, it's not gonna feel right. It's not gonna feel the same. You you'll feel dirty for doing it again, if you will. So <clears throat> the thing is, Peter tells Peter gives these people the opportunity to repent. Yeah. So you can have the opportunity to repent. <clears throat> and if you look in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 22, where it says, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have the story of the prodigal son, a young man who went out into the world, and he did things. Got beat up by the world, basically. And he came back to his father. And his father was not angry with him. But instead, his father was happy. His father told him to go and get the best things and put them on my son. And I went back and I looked through. In fact, you know what? Let's just go to Luke. Chapter 15. Come on, come on. I'm going to go to Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read verses 10. Actually, just verse 10. Mm -hmm. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. Oh, and it reads, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner that repenteth. Amen. Huh? amen. And... What's interesting is this entire, this, this is the theme of this entire chapter, which is, if you repent, the angels in heaven are going to be happy. Amen. So no matter what you may think you have done, if you do genuine repentance, mm -hmm. not that, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, God, and then you just turn around and go back to doing whatever. Yes, yes. Genuine repentance. Yes. The angels in heaven are going to rejoice. Amen. Yes. And so if you repent G and you have faith in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. he is more than able to help you yeah. even if you've fallen off the path. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So God's gonna help you. Uh-huh. He's gonna give you what you need, not necessarily what you want. Uh-huh. Secondly, he's to receive the his help, gotta have faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And thirdly, no matter what you've done, as long as you do, as long as you have genuine repentance, God is going to continue to help you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, at the end of the day, we need to understand that God is 